Hello guys, and welcome to What If Sorrow Was in Sailor Moon. Now I know some of you may not like what ifs when I cross over a popular manga like Sailor Moon with my comic book characters and their worlds, but to me it's this type of what if content that separates me from other what if channels like my what if Agent I was in Dragon Ball, the series which needs an update also. So without further ado, let's get into this story. Now for this story, we are sticking to the Sailor Moon Crystal Timeline. So our story begins not too far into the series of Sailor Moon Crystal. In fact, Usagi has only found fellow Sailor Guardians, Sailor Mercury, and Sailor Mars. Now one day at Juban Public Middle School and a new student is attending school, a boy by the name of Kaelin Gavern in Ami Mizuno is instantly drawn to him. As we know, Ami doesn't normally behave that way, but there was just something about this boy that made her heart race. At that moment, she could relate to how Usagi goes crazy when that tuxedo mask guy is around. However, she would simply regain her composure. Back to her studies, they were more important than some boy. However, Jadeite, one of the four kings of heaven under the control of Queen Beryl, sends a monster to attack the city, and Kaelin is unlucky enough to have it run into him. Ami spots this and transforms into Sailor Mercury. Then on the spot. Now surprisingly, Kaelin was holding his own, at first, with some basic self-defense skills, but quickly is overpowered and the monster is about to steal his life force. When Sailor Mercury appears before and springs into action, with a sailor kick. Shame on you, attacking a defenseless student, just trying to go home, I won't allow it. I am the pretty guardian who fights for love and intelligence. I am Sailor Mercury, douse yourself in water and repent. Kalen takes one look and recognizes Ami from class instantly. I mean, let's face it, their transformations don't conceal their identities that well. He couldn't believe the supposedly shy girl from class was one of those Sailor Guardians he had heard about in the news. Soon, Mars and Sailor Moon appear as well, and the monster is defeated easily with their teamwork. Sailor Mercury drops before Kalen. Hey there, young man. Are you okay? Um, sure. Ami, I am fine. Ami is surprised. Kaelin recognized her. Um, how did you know it was me, Kaelin? Well, you look mostly the same, Kaelin replied. Um, what did Kaelin just say? Usagi asked. Mercury covers Kaelin's mouth hilariously. Oh, it's nothing. He's just a little punch drunk. I'll see him home safely to make sure he's safe. Ami leads Kaelin away. And after a few words, Kaelin promises to keep her secret, other than that it was a nice talk, and Kaelin and Ami both couldn't help but blush. Ami had never walked a boy home before, and no girl has ever walked home with Kaelin. When Kaelin is safely inside his house, Ami bids him farewell, as Ami is called off once again to face yet another monster the Dark Kingdom has sent. Now here is where things differ in the story. For this monster isn't one from the anime, this one is a specter, like monster, which made it very hard to hit. Yet it could attack physically. Ami figured out. They need to strike them the moment it attacks, to have a chance to defeat it. Which was easier said than done, even Tuxedo Mask couldn't land a blow successfully. It would seem they would the Sailor Guardians and Tuxedo Mask would be defeated. Then suddenly he appeared. Big red cape pointy hat, and all. Sorrow has entered the battle. The Sailor Guardians are stunned by this humanoid creature, who seemed to ignore them, and went straight for the spectre, creature grabbing it by the throat. Sorrow reached into this creature's plane of existence, and just grabbed him and with purple fire like magic appearing from his hand, he stole the soul of this monster 
whose body turned to ash before the sailor guardians and tuxedo mask who look on in horror. What did you just do? What are you? Usagi demanding answers and readying her moon tiara. Sorrow simply raises his hand and clenches his fist, bringing the sailor guardian to their knees. They can't move. Then, in yellow flash, he teleports to parts unknown. Just what on earth was this creature? Is it a friend or a foe? Why is it so powerful? All these questions haunt the girls, especially Ami. As she went to bed, she couldn't stop thinking about that creature, that evil presence, its overwhelming power. She needed to think about something else, if she was going to get her healthy eight hours sleep and do well in cram school. Unexpectedly, she finds herself thinking about the new boy Kalen. She didn't know why she thought of him. She only just met him. Yet something about him makes her smile. Now she has another reason to get some sleep so she can wake up and see him again. As Amy arrives on school, she does indeed find Kalen sitting alone under a tree in the school grounds, and so she goes over to join them. Usagi tried to call Ami over but noticed she was running straight to the new boy, so Usagi, being Usagi about it, hilariously decides to sneak in for a closer look. I mean, as far as Usagi knew, Ami didn't think about boys, so this was a must-see. She's not close enough to overhear, but it seemed they were having a nice conversation which was mostly Amy asking him about yesterday, about her true identity as Sailor Mercury, but as Kalen told her yesterday, he will not utter a word about her secret. Ami notices a little cut on Kalen's knee, probably from when the monster was fighting with him yesterday. Ami took him to the school medbay cleaned his wound, and properly bandaged him up something she learnt from her mother, no doubt. Kalen then asked Amy if he could sit next to her in class, so he could catch up on the work. He's missed. After all, he's a new student who better than the smartest girl in school to help him out. Amy blushes, but agrees to help him as best she can with his studies. Over the next couple of days... Amy and Kaylin got to know each other a lot better. Amy felt especially sad that Kaylin had no family. It's just him alone in this strange house. But the inside is surprisingly modern. There's this area that's locked and sealed tight. Amy was curious about, Hey, Kaylin, what's behind that door over there? Amy asked. Kaylin smiled. To be honest, Amy, I haven't the slightest clue. I haven't a key for that door, but one day I'll get in there. You can check it out with me. Ami giggled at the prospect of solving a mystery with Kalen. It is then she regrettably has to leave. Kanan. As Ray contacts her, informing her, she's supposed to be at that princess's ball, the one where Nephrite attempts to possess a famous princess and steal a royal jewel thinking it's the legendary silver crystal. Now that plays out mostly like the original. However, before Nephrite could escape and flee from the Sailor Guardians, he is suddenly attacked by Sorrow. Nephrite, your moment of judgment awaits, Sorrow says in an evil, almost demonic voice. Sorrow's yellow eyes glow as he unleashes one of his special abilities. The judgment stare and trust me, if you've lived a life of sinful wrongdoing, you don't want to get hit by this as you live through the anguish you caused everyone you wronged. If your sins are too great, your head explodes. And that is exactly what happens to Nephrite. The Sailor Guardians look on, in horror, absolutely shocked at what they have seen. They consider fighting Sorrow, but he teleports away again, probably for the best. Ami, especially, was terrified of this sorrow creature. What does it want? That was just brutal. Sure, Ray fried JD, at least in the manga version, but that was self-defense. What Soro did was nothing less than straight-up murder. Yep. Soro's actions only deepen the mystery of his intentions. 
and Sailor Mercury is determined to figure them out. Then she realizes, oh no. I left Kalen alone. I should get back to him. Rei and Usagi also detransform and follow Amy to Kalen's house. And yes, they are creeped out by the outside too. As Amy steps inside, they find Kalen's fainted unconscious on the ground. Amy checks his temperature. He seems to have a fever of sorts, and this is where we are going to leave things for right now. So what did you guys think, if any of you at all are familiar with my Sorrow comics? I definitely tried my best to pull of an even crossover that has aspects of both the world in Sailor Moon and the Sorrow comics. And stories, I am also working on a Sorrow novelization. Thanks for checking out this video. Please like and subscribe and watch all my other videos. And please check out the side business www.hyperprints.com. No spaces for specially designed STL files for 3D printing. Alright, see you all next time.